Welcome back, everyone, to the Nigerian Report. Brian, Kevin Feige confirmed what was already speculated some time ago, Brian. He just confirmed it. So to my, so, so to no one's surprise, to my surprise, I wasn't surprised that I wasn't surprised because we already knew this. I am I am curious and interested in seeing what this alternate world looks like at the Fantastic Four living. But I also find Brian that this multiverse scapegoat cheapens it because, like Tracy said a long time ago, the multiverse is is an open door to do whatever it is that you want. So I'm not, I'm, I'm, my curiosity is just to see what I'm going to see. And I'm not really high on it because of all the other stuff behind it, Brian. But I am curious to see what the Fantastic Four, this ensemble, which has been fully picked, Brian. I'm curious to see what this Fantastic Four family looks like. A lot here, uh, and actually, let's not bury the lead. So these comments from Kevin Feige um, came as part of the launch of the official Marvel podcast, which when I read it, I was like, Marvel didn't have a podcast before now? That actually kind of blew me away that they didn't have that. So, so he's the first guest. So of course, we will be subscribing, and dare I say, Mouse Aganda, in full effect. <laughs> now we get an actual podcast. So it's a damage control podcast coming. Yo, Brian, I was just thinking the same thing right now when you said it. I was like, oh man, they gotta do, they gotta have a mouthpiece to control the Mouse Aganda. Yeah, I need like I need the George Costanza. We're taking it up a notch. Yeah, so. <laughs> But he, but he says, so about the Fantastic Four. So let me read you the quote and then let's get into what you're talking about. Quote, I'm excited, extremely excited because these characters are mainstays, legendary pillars of the Marvel Universe that we've ever got to play with or explore in any significant way outside of Multiverse of Madness and some fun teases. And then he says, talking about your point about New York City in the 1960s. Quote, it's a period piece. And there's another piece of art we released with Johnny Storm flying in the air making the Force symbol. And there was a cityscape in the corner of that image. And a lot of smart people noticed the cityscape didn't look exactly like the New York we know and the New York that existed in the 1960s in our world. And so those are smart observations, I'll say. End quote. He went on to say the film is set for a July shoot. Specifically, it starts the Monday after Comic-Con. So that tells you in Hall H, there'll be something pretty big to launch Fantastic Four officially, presumably with the cast and Matt Shackman. So there it is. Alternate Universe, New York City, 1960. Now, let me ask you a question as I throw this back to you. Could there be a bait and switch going on here? Which is, we know that Marvel is trying to reset and reboot itself on the fly as it is. Who is to say what is the main universe and what is the alternate universe going forward would be my question. And does it matter? The only thing I can say about that is if they're playing that sort of game, Brian, it better play out well because at the end of the day, if we're not satisfied, if we're not wowed with regards to the reveal of how all of this transpires, it's going to fall flat. So I don't, I'm not necessarily right now buying into this whole thing. Once, once I see it, I'll probably, the way I'm going into this, Brian, and the only way I think I can go into this movie, Brian, is by going into it as if this movie was its own thing. I mean, I think that's what they want you to do. I guess my question is they already have so many overlapping universes that we've seen and could be seeing, right? There's a 616, which is what we lived in exclusively. And then there was Multiverse of Madness where we physically saw a few different ones. Um, We now know in Deadpool and Wolverine, you're clearly going to be seeing Hugh Jackman's alternate universe, uh, which we don't know for sure that that's a 20th century Fox verse or not. We assume maybe it is, but we've already been told that movie will not undo the impact of Logan. 
So that implies there's already multiple Hugh Jackman Wolverine universes floating around. So it's starting to get awfully confusing. And I was thinking about this in the context of Loki because Loki was the only thing we've seen do this really well. And one of the ways that I think they did it was they really limited how many of the universes you spent time in. Like if you think about it, they would show you the timeline. So they'd show you all these branches, but you didn't actually spend an adventure in most of those. You basically lived through one character moving into a very select few spots. And that allowed the show, I think, to retain its stakes and stay very focused, even as they were taking on this very confusing thing. But does it remind you also sort of the beginning stages of this multiverse uh, sort of thinking in terms of thinking of all of these different types of places is in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness when they're going through all these different multiverses. So they're just letting us know, oh yeah, all of these exist. Right. And who knows what who we're getting from where i mean brian it's just i get it it's just it's just too much yeah that's why i'm wondering that i guess that's why i'm posing the fantastic four question because it's we know they're the first family we're being told it's another place from our world but i guess i'm submitting the idea that somewhere through the secret wars process or deadpool and wolverine marvel's actually going to attempt to destroy the multiverse to effectively remove a lot of that confusion and so I am speculating, what if the Fantastic Four New York is our new, actual, central universe? They're just not calling it that yet. And that's their way to also, like, box up the Infinity Saga, but then open the door to bring back some of their original characters playing different things, right? Maybe they're playing the same character, but in a totally different way now, or something that they think doesn't compete. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just speculating as to how they're trying to simplify even as they expand. That is a very interesting possibility, Brian, in terms of making, destroying the multiverse and creating this whole new thing that we don't really recognize too much, but yet is interesting. And it's, again, close to the chapter on all we've done, and now this is where we're going. My only thing in the only thing I think about is when Galactus comes, are we going to get to see Galactus destroy a planet or no? I don't know. I say if yes. We do, okay, but it's going to be some prior, it's going to be some sort of beginning thing. We're going to see it in the, we're not going to see it in the, in the, towards the end or anything like that. Because my thought that Galactus was going to destroy this uh, planet Earth that Fantastic Four is on. Okay. And they were going to escape or something like that. That was some things that people were talking about but your theory may it allows them to make these movies a little bit out of order too i was trying to figure this out because i was saying okay so if you say the fantastic four universe is actually the future main universe and it's going to take everything from deadpool and wolverine through secret wars to rectify the rest of the multiverse then by the time you get to whatever year it is and you're starting to make movies again you could then say credibly, we've already given you the historical. Fantastic Four was the historical. This was the look back in the in the universe that we all now are focused on going forward. I mean, it's all speculation, but I'm just I'm trying to make this like sensible to your point because if it's not, if they're going to continue to allow all these strands to exist and characters to cross over, like it's one of my complaints with how they did the Beast crossover. It it to me was like. I get what you're doing from a commercial standpoint because you have this Fox universe and you're trying to pay some homage to it and you have this plan to basically get rid of your old mutants before you start the new ones. But I almost feel like what they inadvertently did was they just made the doorway like that much wider, right? It's like they just were like, hey, we're just going to start, we're going to install another character, a whole nother strand. And it's like, at some point, I think to your point, it's too much and nothing of what you see in these movies has any weight if people's mindset is, yeah, but there's always another door. Like then you're just like the key maker, right? In the matrix, always another way, always another way. Like, and no one ever dies and there's no, and you could say no one ever dies in the comics. I get it. But the comics that are done well are able to make those deaths matter in the moment and then make the resurrections matter when they come later. And like, I feel like we don't really have any track record of that in this case. Yeah. Uh, Brian. 
Anything else before we move on to one of the main? No, I, like I said, I am fascinated by this podcast and to see who comes on and what they talk about. And so I would say I recommend everyone find it, subscribe to it, and let's see what's coming. But um, Hall H this summer, clearly, I would guess this will be the centerpiece. Like what else could be bigger than this that Marvel would? Marvel is confirmed to have a Hall H presentation this year. So what could be bigger than Fantastic Four that they would already have to talk about? I mean, I think this is bigger than Brave New World. I think it's bigger than Thunderbolts. Um, I think it's bigger than anything TV. Yeah, uh, but I expect to see some of what Thunderbolts may have to offer, some of what Captain oh, yeah. America may have to offer. And so also Wonder Man, perhaps some first looks at that because that's been shooting. So but we're going to see. This is the finale. Yes, these, yes, this yes, is, yes. This yes. is the last part yes. of the presentation, I would think. Unless there's an actual Avengers tease, but I don't know what that would be. No. So same interview. Let me mm -hmm. just give you the quote. We've heard almost nothing about this project other than Yahya Abdul-Mateen is the star. And then tragically, I think one of the stunt people, one of the performers was killed during the filming. That's really been the, the two things we've heard. Mm -hmm. There were rumors it was canceled. It clearly is not. Um, because Kevin Feige in this interview, quote, when you stop trying to innovate, that's when you start to atrophy. I think it's important to tell new and unique stories in new and interesting ways. And we have a show coming up we've talked very little about called Wonder Man that I won't talk about much today either, except to say it's extremely different than anything we've done before. And it's a very exciting to be part of a company for 25 years or more still and still be able to do new things and take new characters and storylines to new places. That's what's exciting. And quote, Wonder Man, just to review, is produced, not directed. By Shang Chi director Destin Cretton. All we can say is, I mean, it sounds a lot similar to a lot of the things that they have created that were horrible. Uh, so it's like, Brian, what else do I expect him to say? You know, yeah. I, I can only take him at his word. And then when the final result is revealed, then you're judged by by that. You know, I always kept saying it was Kevin Feige that was high on the marbles. That's a line that's going to hang around his neck for a long time, is comparing that to the gathering in Avengers 1. That's a it's tough... Like, dude, it's like, yo, how are you going to say that, man? How are you going to say that to... Like, if I had Kevin Feige in front of me, I'm like, yo, how could... Say that to me again with a straight face. <laughs> Maybe he's the life model decoy. Um, <laughs> so Wonder Man's happening, whether we like it or not. We, we look at our show on the TV review, because we talked about it. I mean, I think for him to say this in the first episode of its official podcast, for them, if they were to go back on that and cancel this show now, would be a pretty, pretty big egg oh, on yeah, the face. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, happening. Yeah, we're yeah. getting it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, but I think, real quick, Brian, I think Wonder Man will spawn, although we're still getting it, but will spawn some sort of perhaps uh, introduction into Vision Quest. Okay. I could see, yes, I could see that. The characters do do have that, do have that connection. My my point was just going to be when they announced Wonder Man, I think they were still in a phase in a place where the Marvel label sold the character, if that makes sense. Like they, it was like they, it, when they had that like goodwill coming off of Endgame, that was a period where if you saw the Marvel label and it was from Marvel Studios, you rested assured you were in for quality entertainment. And so they announced this show kind of during that period. We we're getting it at a time where they don't really have that benefit anymore. And now I feel like they're at a point where they need the characters to and the shows themselves to do the selling because the Marvel label is a little bit tainted. And, I, and that's where my doubt about this show comes in because I'm just sort of like, do people care about a Wonder Man show? The only people that can sell this show is the people. If the show is good. If the show is good, the people will get the word out. And if they're interested, it'll show. If they're not, it'll tell us this. People just don't care anymore. Yeah. I think. But I think the bar for that's really high. Like, I think, like, I think about how the boys carved out its niche, right? A, a less, a much lesser known property that became sort of prestige TV. And maybe now it's, I guess they're, they're, they've one more season after this one. That's it. But that's what it kind of feels like these shows need to have. Like they need to deliver something where the critical buzz and the early audience reaction is like, Kevin wasn't 
exaggerating. This is very different Marvel in a very good way. And it's appointment viewing, not because it's a comic book property. It's appointment viewing because it's great television. Yeah. I will be very skeptical that this show is that. I think someone outside of Kevin should be speaking. Kevin shouldn't talk anymore. After what you said about the Marvels, you shouldn't talk anymore. And your push for the this uh, Young Avengers, stop talking. This is what this is Ron Burgundy. Uh, what's the guy? Hey, <laughs> champs, stop talking. Take a few, and you know, chill out. <laughs> That's this is for him. Yeah. Stop. Brian, what do you think about this Teron Egerton possibility of him being Wolverine? Obviously, this is something that people have been speculating for quite some time. Even Teron Egerton has spoken a bit about it. And the list, Brian, of people who, like the top, that's, I, I read a top 10 list. I think John Campy. I don't know, it wasn't John Campy. Somewhere I saw a list. And they're looking at a comic book accurate type individual in terms of Wolverine size, Brian. And but I'm hoping, Brian, that this dude don't look like Menudo. He can't look young and you know he has to look Wolverine is has a certain look. He can look like new kids on the block. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, look, I mean, Teron Edgerton has been rumored for a long time. There's also rumors that, you know, I think there's also a rumor that he's in Deadpool and Wolverine, but in the cameo version, right? Like, not as the next guy, necessarily. We don't know, but, but that's... That, been... But they've been saying that the next Wolverine... Will... Is in the Perhaps. movie. Yes. Is in the movie. So, anyway, his quote was very diplomatic. He, he recently told Variety, quote, I love Marvel, I love the movies, and I would love the excuse to get in shape. I'd love to be a part of it. Whether Wolverine is realistic or not, I don't know. End quote. So, you know, that's not a denial, but I don't know. I don't, it doesn't tell you anything. So, but you're right. We've had the same list for a long time. Um, and it's ironic because it's almost like they, well, I think part of the problem is like when people are fan casting, people fan cast people they know. <laughs> Yeah, certainly. Right, so finding the next Hugh Jackman for a fan is almost impossible because he was completely unknown. And, but in some ways, that was that worked out really well, and I would probably encourage Marvel to do the same again. Like bring someone with no baggage who who actually legitimately auditioned, and they were like, "Holy crap, that guy is five foot five, and is <laughs> snarling and fierce, and like you know he's already got thirty pounds of muscle on him. He's ready to roll." Like I don't know who that is, but I'm just saying like. Don't rule that person out just because you can get your hands on a bigger name today. They should do. Let me give them a Disney. Let me give Disney a show. I, they wouldn't do it, but it's interesting. An American Idol type show trying to get Wolverine. Oh my God! <laughs> just, just find them. Find them. That show would be great. Tough. Right <laughs> up until some fan actually kills somebody in an audition with a claw. <laughs> <laughs> the show is so. I, I, I wanted to show my savagery. <laughs> my only, the only thing that doesn't scare me too much is his ability to act, right? His performing sure. abilities, and whether or not they're going to leave him as is, or make him grizzled enough. You know what I'm saying, Brian? I'll make one more argument for the unknown because we already have heard, right, that the that the right the initial writer and let let's first off, <laughs> given everything we said about Blade, let's not assume the initial writer's pitch is going to be the one that they make because yeah. you know we've seen that happen before where it changes very quickly. But given that Michael Leslie has said he literally wants the exact same lineup in live action as we got in X Men '97, I would point out Wolverine is very much a secondary character in X Men '97. So people who are fan casting Wolverine, are you sure you even know that Wolverine is top build for what Marvel has in mind? Who's to say he's not going to be coming off the bench as opposed to what he has been for the past 25 years, which I would actually applaud if they tried that. Yeah, me too, because then you can lead, you can put him in his own series. Exactly. And you don't have to build everything around him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Don't... Put him out one year, and then you gotta wait for this dude two, three years. You can put him 
right after, if, if he portrays the character as we know the character to be, Brian, and you put him in his own series afterwards, that's like Matt Reeves the Penguin. Yeah. There it is right there. There's no overthinking this. There it is. Yeah. And Colin Farrell's a bigger name actor, but he disappeared into the Penguin. If he sh- if it showed people on the street, hey, this is the Penguin, it didn't tell you who was playing him, most people probably wouldn't pick up on who that was until it was after the fact. So there's nothing to say that you can't have a Wolverine who's in the movie for 10 minutes, steals it, and then goes off and does a show, and you're hyped to see what his deal is. So, yeah, I I think people need to be open to all possibilities is, I guess, what I would say. You know what? I, I think there's a possibility there because I can see, Brian, a young Hugh Jackman in him, just a shorter version, if they, if they, if they pull it off right. But we'll see. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of what we've talked about. We've talked about Toronto Egerton and Wolverine. We talked about Wonder Man. And we talked about Fantastic Four. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of what Kevin has said regarding Fantastic Four. Uh, and Wonder Man. Do you even care about Wonder Man, really? Like, like nobody really has been talking about it other than tragedy. You know, but you know what I'm saying? It's... it's there's no news that excites you other than you getting a Wonder Man show. And possibly, I, I, I think there's going to be a connection to Vision Quest because Vision Quest on his own really doesn't, uh, again, garner any interest. And then Teron Egerton as Wolverine. This is the possibility. This is who people are speculating Wolverine to be. Because, I mean, hey... If they can, if they can make him old, right? They can keep him for a long time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. I will see you next time on the Nigeria Report. The show goes.